Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is BT Sports coming to you from the KSU Studios at St. Louis University. As always, I'm Bobby Stillwell. And as always, I'm Tim Chagru. And we've got a very good week planned for you here on BT Sports. Just as always. Just as always. And of course, you know, we always start off with our little monologue about what's happened during the week for both of us. So, um, yeah. yeah. Well, Bobby, I mean, you got some big news, right? You I do have spill? some big news. Yeah, I, I, went, the I went to the big top. I went, <laughs> uh, St. Louis's CBS affiliate, KMOV, one of the meteorologists invited all the um, AMS club, the American Meteorological Society. Uh, she, she invited us as all. As always. She invited us all over and... Um, <laughs> A group of us went over there. I actually got my new profile picture. It's me in the, it's me in the weather center running the computers. I'm sit, not really running them, but you get the idea. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just sitting there, you know, looking like I'm running the computers, and it's just I'm sitting there, you know, <laughs> just manipulating the mouse, and I'm in there. Okay, update this monitor, you know. Yeah. That's sort of thing. It's actually a really professional picture. Yeah, no, to, I saw it. I gave it I think we took. <laughs> yeah, you did see it. Yeah, and to think it. The, the, actually, that meteorologist took it on my phone for me. Yeah, that's just amazing how phones can take such good quality pictures nowadays. Yeah, oh for sure. So what all what all did you get to do there? And basically, we uh, got to watch the newscast live. Really? So we're staying off to the side wall. You know, they're doing their thing. Yeah. We uh, toured the entire studio. Yeah. Even the behind the scenes areas like the editing room, the sound room, the control room, really? all that stuff. We got to see that. We got to see, they have a variety show, kind of a magazine show, Great Day St. Louis, during the week. Okay. Uh, we got to see the Great Day set, where the old news set was, their new news set, which yeah. is what they use now. And I got to tell you, it may look good on the air, but it looks even better in person. Really? That news set is amazing. <laughs> it looks so modern. And that was on, that was on Saturday, Saturday, I went right? and did yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Saturday evening. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I know, really cool opportunity for somebody who's going into meteorology. Yeah, I bet. It was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we of course we got to go straight to the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. Over the weekend, a lot there was of Cardinals a, news. They played they played the Reds, and that would have been I wasn't that that was Sunday. Sunday, uh, the Cards played in Cincinnati, uh, and um, yeah, and, and Carp Matt Carpenter had the big hit the ele- hit in the eleventh inning home run. To seal the deal. To seal the deal. <laughs> it was just amazing. Let's see. Yeah. Per- could not keep the game tied in the 11th. Two batters after Colton won, hit a leadoff single to right. Carpenter attacked a 3-2 fastball. It was belt high and over the plate and deposited into the right center field seats. <laughs> it was Carpenter's first home of the season, and he finished with four RBIs. And then Villanueva pitched two innings to get the to seal the victory. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that's, who, that's who, just... Who started for the, uh, the uh, cards? Uh, I don't. Who did start that game? I'm trying to yeah. figure that out. It doesn't say here exactly who started, but I will say. Oh yeah, I forgot. Price got ejected. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Reds manager the Red, got, yeah, got the tossed. Manager. He got arguing because Jay didn't. Jay got hit. Jay got hit, and then uh, he argued with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who. Um. Yeah, I don't know who started that looking. one. I think that may have been Lackey actually. Really. I think it was Lackey that started that game. Not Wayno. Oh, no, no, no. no. Wayno had already done the Cubs game. Yeah, now, and then he did the uh, yeah, and home did, opener. Yeah, and Wayno did the home opener, which I kind of was a little uh, about. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, he came home on a good note, but they just couldn't m- make it happen. Um, Timmy, that... You were, I know you were in there watching all the, you know, the pre-game stuff they do, like the Hall of Famers For the home out. opener? Yeah, the, yeah. Bud, the Budweiser Clive deals come out to Here Comes the King. Yeah. I, I mean, I've never been... I'm actually, you know, I grew up a, a Reds fan, so yeah, go Reds. <laughs> I'm transitioning I'll to a see Cards you after, fan. I'll see you after the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to be a Cards fan, but uh, um, but I've never seen any uh, opening day activities like that. That was that. <laughs> we sat in a uh, sat in Bobby's room and did our prep work with uh, opening day going. To, I mean, it's like a 30 minute ordeal that they yeah. have going on. Yeah, but like the it's... Clydesdales come out. And yeah, the Clydesdales come out. Then you get the Hall of Famers coming out. And this year was a new... something. They did something new this year. They had they had the National Hall of Famers. So, you know, they had Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, mm-hmm. Tony La Russa, Red Shane Deanst, Ozzie Smith, yeah. Whitey Herzog. They had all those <laughs> guys out there. And then they had three guys from the St. Louis Baseball Hall of Fame, including Mike Shannon, yeah. the broadcaster. Of course, of course yeah, not M- Mr. Shannonism. <laughs> but no, it was it was awesome to see those guys out there. And then then they had the players come out and shake hands with them. Yeah. Funny thing, Hayward came out 
and he actually uh, skipped yeah. the Hall of Famers. <laughs> and then and Rookie then Matheny, Matheny hugged him and said, "Go over and shake their hands." <laughs> and then he, and then Hayward walked over to shake their hands. <laughs> to yeah. me, the fact that the Hall of Famers were just laugh were laughing with Hayward, yeah. I think it was just a mistake on his part. I, I mean, you could I, say that goes I, back to the Cardinal way. I, I, I think I think he just didn't know he was supposed to. Yeah. Or something like that. Probably nervous. Yeah, probably. Like I said, you know, first time Cardinal, first opening day as a Cardinal. I think that's just, you know, Hayward was just, and made, the, just made a mistake. And you said this was your first time that you've been able to watch it in yeah, like least, 10 years, 10 or, years so. or something like that. Yeah, because I was always in school when and, it yeah. happened. And so yeah. finally, he, you got the chance to sit down and watch it again. Watch it live, yeah. Yeah, in high def. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Slew, for HD. <laughs> in high def, just... Not without the technical problems. <laughs> yeah, it, it always happens that we don't see the whole opening day ceremony on Fox Sports. Something always At comes up. At least it was Fox Sports and not NBC. Some years it's been NBC that's had the opening day game. Really? And they, it's it's stupid. <laughs> and, you know, the Blues do the three stars of the game after each Blues game. Yeah. The um, NBC Sports had one of the games last season, and they skipped that. They cut really? straight to their pre-game, post-game stuff, and I'm sitting here going... Hey NBC Sports, um, you got a lot of St. Louis people who might want to see the three stars of the game. Yeah, it's, I mean, because when Fox Sports when Fox Sports does it, you got you know Painter, you've got um, oh jo- jo- Joe, Ke- you got John Kelly up there. Yeah, you, you, you got you know St. Louis guys that are doing it, and you get the Hall of Famer Bernie Federico. Paint, yeah, I said Painter, but yeah, Bernie or Painter usually is down you know in the bench to interview the guy. Yeah. And usually Fox Sports Midwest, they'll interview. They interview the first star of the game. Really? <laughs> Funny thing, I was watching one game. Uh, Oshi, TJ Oshi, mm-hmm. who had, had his Oshios that morning. Yeah. <laughs> you to, I'll tell you that joke no, later. Yeah. Anyway, he had his Oshios that morning. He was on. He was doing good that. He was yeah. doing good that night. He um, he just left. He just leaped right over the the uh, wall to talk to uh, Painter. Yeah. And Painter just laughs and says, <laughs> "Oh, there's there's your Oshios. You had them today, didn't you?" And Oshi goes, "I sure did." <laughs> It was nuts. <laughs> That's um, funny. Tavares. They had a really yeah. nice tribute to Oscar Tavares. I mean, we keep going. He, he seems to be a topic ever since mm-hmm. the first show. That I mean, I mean, we talked about it. We talked about him then. You know, the tragedy right. of it, and then even up till now, they're still. I mean, he should, he just hasn't been forgotten. Right. I know. And then they have another patch next to Daryl Kyle and jo- and Josh Hancock out in uh, the bullpen. Yeah. At Bush, and then they also have the patches on the uh, uniforms for him. Yeah. Actually, and they have. I don't. No, I don't think they have the patches for Stan the Man this year. Really? They yeah. did that last year. They did it last year because Stan died last yeah. year. Yeah. But just um, kind of replaced it maybe with. Yeah. Tavares. No, it's really a it's really a good thing though. And Mar- see, Mar- like I said, Carlos Martinez, he's wearing eighteen from Tavares. Yeah. And. I have to tell you, it was it was really touching. Uh, Martinez actually was crying, and I think a lot of the other teammates were too, yeah. because Tavares was one of the best prospects we had. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, he and had, I don't know, I can't remember the guy that was next to him, but the guy next to him just, you know, put, it, a, put his arm around yeah. Martinez, because Martinez and Tavares were probably the best of fr- were the best of friends. Yeah, and, uh, it's and a shame. I, I, and like like I've said that multiple weeks in a row, it's a really, it's really. Nice to see that they were paying tribute, and then Brian Burwell, who was a reporter, who was a writer for the Post Dispatch Sports, they did. They also had a tribute to him. Yeah, they had said, had a moment of silence for him and Tavares at the same time. Yeah, no, it was a it was a really cool. Uh, for and, and that's being the, the first time that's I've very seen it. abnormal too for to do a tribute like that during opening day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and watching it, you know, they broke the tradition to do that, but it was a very like no, it was everybody. Right, was very, they were they were all. I mean, respectful and new. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think everybody appreciated it. Yeah, of course, there were a few. There were a few, you know, cheers after the video, which they probably were all cheering, you know, the way they did the video. But they asked for moment of silence after some kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah, I, I doubt anybody meant it. Any and, any form of disrespect, but no, I, yeah, no. I and mean. yeah, it was really it was really nice though. So, um, ceremonial first pitch, Willie McGee. I forgot about him. He actually is in the St. Louis Baseball Hall of Fame. Okay. Not Willie, yeah, not the National. Yeah. Willie and Ozzy were out there. Willie made the first, the ceremonial first pitch to Ozzy, right in the strike zone. <laughs> Willie still got it, and so does Ozzy. him out there. And so does Ozzy. They should have thrown him out there. I mean, the end result was not a... <laughs> yeah, either way. And, um, you know, idea. really interesting thing. Hayward, when he came up for his first at-bat as yeah. a Cardinal here in Bush, the entire crowd got on their feet, gave him a standing ovation. Yeah. And I was watching that, and I go, "That is the cardinal way. That, <laughs> that's why we we have the best fans in baseball. Yeah, because we respect all our people. Yeah, 
Even former Cardinals, like Scott Rowland, great example. We traded him. And when he, he comes back. He came back, you know, as I think he went to Cincinnati, actually. Yeah? Cincinnati or L.A., one of the two. But he, um, like, yeah. I can't remember where he went. He went somewhere. I think it was Cincinnati. Yeah. I, uh, that's, where did... Uh, I, think Roland, I think Roland went to Cincinnati after we uh, had him, but like, anyway. Like five, six years ago? Oh, it would have been a while back. Yeah, yeah. but great example. Yeah. Roland came up as, you know, the opposing team. Cardinal Nation, staying ovation. Yeah. And then he struck out, staying ovation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, just the respect of it. Respect and many all. former players come back and say, you know, they loved it. This okay, yeah, yeah. The, the three guys they had three, and I remember they had three guys come out from the base, the St. Louis Hall of Fame with the National Hall of Fame. Okay, the three guys that came out were Willie McGee, um, Jimmy ba- Jim Edmonds, yeah, Jimmy Baseball as we like to call him, <laughs> and then Shannon. Okay, and so they're they're just in the St. Louis Hall of Fame. Yeah, right they're now. in the St. Louis Hall of Fame in the inaugural class. Okay, yeah. Oh, they were the ones that just got they just got inducted into yeah, the St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Larusa, he's the youngest Hall of Famer yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah, let's see. Like I said, you got the National Hall of Famers, LaRusa, Whitey, um, Red, Shane Deans, mm-hmm. who still is with the Cardinals as a special yeah. assistant. Yeah. He's still on the payroll for Card- the Cardinals. <laughs> he really knew what, to, what he was doing, though. So you got Red. Um, like I said, you got Gibby, Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, and the Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith. <laughs> you know, you're Cardinals. <laughs> That's what happens when Welcome you Welcome to St. Louis, Louis, Timmy. Yeah. <laughs> Cardinals well, carry some weight. Yeah. Now, while it um, while it was a good home opener, and I thought we really had a shot because we came, we came back and tied it up. Yeah. But I mean, we were watching, I mean, and then I think we had to yeah. split pretty soon. But on the, I think it was the first at bat. Uh, yeah. There was an error, and that. Yeah. First A B was an error. Errors were the big problem. That seemed I, to be a common occurrence throughout the game. Yeah, it was, and it just I did not like it. Yeah. It that's, kind of upset me. The title on the uh, on the post dispatch, the, <laughs> the post, yeah, off target errors hurt as cards lose home opener. Yeah, and I'm just sitting there going, yep, and they've got a full, and then on, the, on this is actually um, Tuesday sports edition, so yesterday's mm-hmm. sports because we didn't get a paper today. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to somebody about that. Um, yeah, it's a big full, pretty much two thirds of the page is full of Adams. And Col- Colton one ended up overthrowing Adams on that play. Is what happened? Yeah. And it went into the seats. And then Hayward, Hayward missed one on an, missed one of the balls. Hayward missed you know one error charge to Hayward, but then one of them was really close, and they actually counted it as a hit. Yeah. Okay. It was. I was not happy with what I was seeing. I mean, I was sitting there screaming at the TV. You know. <laughs> Let's face it, Timmy, we all scream at TV every now and then when we're watching sports. It gets the best of us. (laughs) Like when I'm watching NASCAR, I'll always scream, you know, if somebody spins Jimmy, I'll go, Dan Harvick, why just spin Jimmy out? (laughs) Or something like that, you know? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Um, I mean, looking at it, I mean, it came down five to four. The Cardinals out hit him, nine to eight. Just Yeah, just those stinking errors. And the thing was, Milwaukee capitalized off the errors. Yeah. That's what they did. They capitalized off the errors. We couldn't. But, I mean, it's early in the year. I mean, no. no like I said, it, 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 it kind of upset the home opener, but that's the thing with the Cardinals. Like, right now, I am actually actually have a live score here. They're yeah. up 2-1 to one right now, bottom of the third, one out, guy yeah. on second. And then they got, did they play us? No. They play tomorrow, too? Yeah, they'll play tomorrow. Okay. Their and next, their next day off isn't until after we're out of school. Because uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they have the Reds coming in town. Oh boy, that's gonna be good. Yeah, I, th- I'm thinking I might might try to go to one of those games. Maybe. We'll see. I mean, being from the Cincinnati area, but right. Um, I'll be rooting for the cards. <laughs> yeah, it it was um, it was pretty, it was pretty uh, bad out there. Yeah. But we got yeah. I mean yeah, they'll bounce back. Yeah, they'll bounce back. Now no we're problem. now we're on to the Blues. Yeah. Our. Central Division champion St. Louis Blues. <laughs> they got it. They want. They clinched the division, and that would have been that. They clinched it last Friday, and for that, the Blues are the Fireball. Woo. That's right. The Blues <laughs> are the Fireball of the week on BT Sports. Yeah. And then they uh, they beat the Hawks for that, right? They did. They had to beat the Blackhawks to do that. And that's always a fun one. If you can beat the Blackhawks. If you can clinch. beat the Blackhawks, oh yeah, it's great. And now the 
Who they got the first round? Is it the Wild? The Wild, yeah. And actually, they, uh, let's see, they beat the Wild at, for their last regular season game. Yeah. They beat their they beat the Wild. And now they they got, did they play tomorrow? They're playing tonight. Tonight, yeah. I'm trying to get a live score if I can. Yeah, we'll, we'll pull that up. Um, I'm sure, we're not sure, we might be getting a call in about that, uh, the wild, the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, the Minnesota the, uh, Wild. Actually, I was about, we know who it is, and I was about ready to go in there and mess with him earlier, but I couldn't find him. Oh yeah. Oh well. We'll see if he calls in. Yeah, eight thirty. Yeah, eight thirty tonight. So they're not. They're actually they're going to start while we're on, while we're on the air. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep you updated on that game. Yeah, I mean I've got it right here, ready to go. Um, I'll be getting some updates as we go along. But, but yes, yeah, so the Blues. Throughout the season, they they only lost to the Wild. I, I don't have that. We don't have that stat. Me, I think it was only. I think they played like three or four times. To- four. Yeah. I think four times, and then they uh, went three and one against them. I think. Mm-hmm. Um. So I don't yeah, think there should be any problem. Really cool blues. story I found though. The Blues set a ratings record on Fox Sports Midwest. Yeah. This is the 2014-15 season was the highest regular season average in team history. Hockey's back. <laughs> on well, that's on Fox Sports anyway. Fox yeah. Sports Midwest. So, I mean, Fox Sports Midwest, you know, that is, um, oh, Fox Sports Midwest. They've been on Fox Sports Midwest since, I th- want to say, the 90s. Yeah. Because whenever the Fox launched, it, launched a channel. And, and it it, says, you know, they regionalized it, too. It says that their, uh, the local market TV ratings rank second among U.S. based, US based NHL teams throughout the year. And this is their highest ever. So That's amazing. Looks like St. Louis has some big hockey fans. Yeah, oh wait, we do. We love our we love the Blues and we love the Cardinals. Now, the Rams are kind of a sore subject around here. <laughs> if they can pick it up, then maybe that'll maybe, maybe that'll, that'll change. change yeah. But again, yeah, the Blues had to hold off the Hawks to clinch the Central, and by golly, they managed to do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and actually, did. here's what happened: they had they had to beat Chicago and then Nashville, and then let's see, uh, the Predators had to lose Nashville. So it's funny we were. We were rooting for the the Wild to win against Nashville, <laughs> but we wanted to win against uh, Minnesota before going into the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting. So and the, now the Blackhawks and Predators play tonight too, as well. I think. I think so. Yeah, I think that's how it's working. It's, it's crazy how the playoff seedings are all working around the uh, the uh, NHL right now. Yeah, that that at the oh wow on that game at the end of the first period, the Predators are up three to zero on the Blackhawks. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> in, Three goals already. In the words of that that polka dot dinosaur creature from that kids show we grew up watching, great googly moogly. <laughs> great polka dot dinosaur? Yeah, that's big yellow red polka dot, red yellow dinosaur with red polka dots. It was this kids show we watched. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now. <laughs> yeah, okay, top of, yeah, cards, cards brewers update, <laughs> top of the fourth, nobody out, cards up 2-1 over the brewers. No, and they are in St. Louis, just yeah. like the Blues are. Could be a big, big day for St. Louis. Yeah, it'll night. be it'll be a big traffic nightmare tonight. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Good thing we won't be driving. Yeah. Tonight. You ever tried being on the Poplar after both sports get out? <laughs> not Imagine fun. It's probably not good. The Poplar is ridiculous. Yeah, heading back over the river. Yeah, it's good they got that other bridge to help out, but it's still not helping any. <laughs> but, anyway, but yeah, the, so here's what the article from the Post Dispatch says on their website. The Blues were in the locker room for mere seconds Thursday night after their 2-1 win over Chicago when the night's other game that mattered to them wrapped up in Nashville. Minnesota, which, which rested its top three scorers and starting goaltender, had rallied for a 4-2 win over the Predators. The se- this sequence of events meant the Blues were crowned Central Division champions. Yeah. There so we, we got go. the division. We got home We got home ice advantage for this round of it. Yeah. Now, we don't have home ice advantage the whole way. Yeah. But it's really good. I'm really excited to see what happens. It'd be cool. I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool to see. Uh, interesting to see who wins between the Blackhawks and Predators. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, interesting let me to see if the Blues can pull off a win and then maybe play the. Uh, yeah, play holy the cow! Yeah, you're right. Three nothing at the end of the first period. Yeah, that's a. Whew, man. Um. Yeah, here's what happens: the Blues have not advanced past the first round in each of the past two seasons. And haven't gone past the second since Coach Ken Hitchcock was yeah. hired in the early 2011-12 season. And they've dropped to the Hawks, I think. The past two series have followed the same script. The Blues won the first two and then lost the next four to, te- to two different teams. The LA Kings in 13 and the Blackhawks in 2014. Okay. And both teams eventually end up losing in the conference final. Yeah. 
And the Wild are back in the seat, back again. They went one round further than the Blues last season. It says, ex- the play preview from the Blues website says, expect this series to be tight and low scoring because the Wild and Blues are two of the NHL's best teams at preventing goals and suppressing shots. Mm-hmm. St. Louis was fifth in goals against per game at 2.4 and second in shots against per game at 27.2. Minnesota was sixth and fourth. So we actually are a little bit higher. We're actually a little bit better, than, just a slight bit better yeah. than the Wild. So this is definitely going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, it'll be... I mean, let's see. They have a... What, they play tonight? Nope, they, they play tonight. Um, well, this, this thing looks wrong. It says they play... Yeah, that 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 is wrong. The calendar they've got. I've got I've got the real schedule up here somewhere to me. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Playoff schedule. Uh, they'll they play ten. Again, it's wrong. Yeah, they say it's. They. We can check up on that. Yeah, they should be playing tonight. I think. Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, they do. No, they play tomorrow. We we that is correct. They play tomorrow. Okay. Well. They play tomorrow. So. Then they got they start with a couple home games, then a couple in Minnesota, and then yeah. bring it back and. And rotate every day. Yeah, game. so it's gonna. They're playing Thursday. <laughs> they're playing Thursday. Let me get my calendar up here real quick so I can figure it out. Mm-hmm. You've got. They will be playing tomorrow, Saturday. They play mon- next Monday. In Minnesota. In Minnesota. Next Wednesday in Minnesota. And then they play. The 24th, so that will be next Friday. Here, then if that's these are all if necessary at this yeah. point. Game five, six, and seven will be if necessary. If it's not a sweep, right? Game five, like I said, game five is here in St. Louis, and that is Saturday. And then game six will be Sunday at Minnesota, and then game seven if necessary comes back here, and that would be that would actually be our last show of the semester on the 29th. Well, look at that. I know, we could end with a Blues win, maybe. <laughs> That'd be cool. It would be cool. So definitely it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Blues. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, at least on their uh, offensive side, it's been, I know, like, what, Tarasenko, I mean, uh, Schwartz, Oshi, a lot of balance on the offensive end. If yeah, they definitely. If they continue to keep that up, who knows? Who knows how far they might be able to go. But Yeah. Uh, we got a few more. I mean, we got a few more stories. Time's really flying. Um, it is, yeah. A big one in the NFL. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Can't say he didn't deserve it. <laughs> but Aaron Hernandez was sensitive. The opinions expressed in this show are the opinions solely of the hosts and not the opinions of KSLU or St. Louis <laughs> University. <laughs> a little, side, a little, <laughs> little disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, I have to throw the disclaimer out there. <laughs> um, uh, he's sentenced to life in prison for first-degree murder, and I can't... I can't remember. It might be. It might. They might list them all on here. But he was. He was found guilty of a number of counts, um, which I don't know if if the listeners out there remember. He was a uh, former now tight end for the Patriots, who back probably 2013 um, was um, uh, this whole big this whole big scandal came out where. Um, about him murdering someone and it's been you know it's taken a while for it to come out um and he sat out the 2014 season and then this year he had to sit out again i mean he wasn't even on the team and now they found him guilty and he's going to jail but uh and this year i mean the patriots were the patriots were the super bowl winners (laughs) <laughs> yep, and uh, you know, you kill somebody in the U.S., you're gonna end up going to jail for it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that's the way it is. That is the way it is. So that's, um, and they, they, I mean, without him, they ended up winning the winning the Super Bowl. So looks like they're not they're not too hurt missing him. They got uh, another superstar tight end, Rob Gronkowski. That's done more than uh, take his take his place, but. Um. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's 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 the only NFL news story we have is Aaron Hernandez getting convicted. Um, yeah, that's all we got. It's not a it's not a small one though. Um. And then NASA, we got the 
Um, we got a NASCAR story. We got the uh, NF- uh, the NBA. Uh, yeah, it's coming down. Yeah, you know, you know, Timmy. I um. I'll tell you. Um, I think we should go ahead and open it up. It's a little bit earlier than normal to open up the lines, but I think we're going to go ahead and open the lines up. Okay. Just, you know, I, th- I think there's a lot of people listening tonight. Yeah. A lot of new listeners, actually, from what I've uh, gathered. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I've been talking up to a lot of, a lot of the people of, up on 4G, so. Yeah. A lot of new people are going to be call- listening and calling in tonight. Well, for sure. You heard Bobby. Go I know I know, our, I know. our NBA expert's going to be calling in. Yeah? <laughs> NBA and FIFA expert, for that matter. <laughs> All he's right. Gonna, well, he's going to be calling in. We'll, oh, well, here it is. We'll take, we'll take we'll this take one, this then, one. We'll, then we'll give the number for everybody yeah. else. <laughs> you want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. Let's see if they're going to kid around this week. Bob dog has got it. Yeah. BT Sports, it's Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Can I talk to Timmy? <laughs> Okay. okay, I got a question. Is this going to be a sign of what's of the same joke that was played last week where what? <laughs> the alternate answering joke? Will we hop around? Hello? Uh, <laughs> hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, are you there? Yeah, this is um, Brady here. Oh, how you doing? Um, I'm good. I'm a little bit um, kicked off by the commentary about the Minnesota Wild because hailing from the great northern state that is the state of hockey... I know that the Wild will come in clutch and definitely defeat the Blues, who have got a history of choking in the playoffs. Well, we shall see about that. Bob is giving you a big old thumbs down on that one. We'll see. I, I mean, mean, I know the Blues are good at looking good during the regular season, but I haven't seen them close for God knows how long. Well, that was last year, the years before. This is uh, this is 2015. It's a whole new world, Braden. Close the yearbook, buddy. Well, it, uh, <laughs> the rosters are pretty much the same. If I well, like a gander. This is the rosters are pretty much the same as the Blues have had the last few years when they always choke. That's irrelevant. The Wild have brought in Zach Parise, um, it's a ton of new guys. They got Comfort and that goalie. It sounds like a ton of new guys. What? I said it sounds like a ton of new guys. It does. I, I mean, heard, you I got Tudor, Tomlinville. Well, we'll Manic. see. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow night. Yeah, I mean, I guess only time will tell, but. I'm just saying, for all the other listeners out there, go Minnesota Wild. Well, we'll, Blues we'll, stand a chance. we'll check back in next week and uh, let the listeners know how well the Blues did against yep, and, the... Uh, um, good luck to the Dayton Flyers next year in the tournament. I know the MIT is going to be waiting for you. All right, that's that's enough on that topic. We'll talk to you later, bud. Thanks for the call in. All right. I always, okay. love, I always love having Braden call in. He's giving us some hate over here. Us, he's, us. Well, yeah, I remember he's from Minnesota. So yeah, I, but I was, <laughs> that, you know, Braden was the one I was going to go, uh, you know, go uh, pull his leg a little bit before the show, yeah. before I even got over give here. Give him some smack talk. Yeah, give him, a little, give him a little smack talk, you know. You know, because, like I said, he's from Minnesota, I'm from St. Louis, and actually we're going to be rivals for the, ne- for the next um, couple weeks or so. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say a couple of weeks. It'll uh, that game will be over. Or that series will be over by uh, by next Wednesday. It better be over by next Wednesday. <laughs> and the Blues better be on top four. Yeah, the Blues is sweeping them. No doubt. No doubt. Better, about better it. get that sweep. It's best of seven. So I'm looking. I'm looking for four for four wins and no losses. Hitchcock, can you do that for me? <laughs> Just thank you, Coach Hitchcock. Four games and, and get out of there. Ding 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 ding. We have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to open it up to call in. Yeah, we'll go ahead and give the number now. We didn't give it initially. <laughs> for, the, for the new listeners, the number is 314-977-1581. And Timmy and I are be, will be more than happy to take your call-ins. As yeah. Long, as long as they are not music. Uh, inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> inappropriate comments. <laughs> yeah. Or. If they're on the topic of sports. If, yeah, <laughs> sports. I mean, the occasional, you know, somebody yeah, calls we, in about we the... like the, the, we somebody, Like last week, yeah, somebody call in worried about the lightning because yeah. last week there was a thunderstorm blowing through while, while we, we were doing the show. Yeah, and we had a lot of a lot of static. Yeah, and we did, but I think I think that actually was the storm causing it. I mean, we've had a little bit tonight in our... And ladies and gentlemen, that is in our headsets here at BT Sports. That You guys are not hearing any of that on the air. Yeah. It's just something we're annoyed by, but I think the I think it really was the lightning storm that caused it. Yeah, I was I would agree. There's nothing this week. No, you'll I'll take, take this one and see. No, see you take this one and okay. see if they hand it off. Okay. Hey, this is uh, Timmy at BT Sports. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Timmy. Um, 
Brayden just um, asked me to uh, get on the phone with you, and uh, buddy, I'm, I have a question. I'm supposed to ask him to get it out really quick. Um. All right. Just make sure it's the uh, it's an it's an appropriate question, and we'll be happy to well, answer. I, oh, I, all right. Here it is. Um. So I've been thinking about Brayden. And I've been thinking about um the Minnesota's NHL uh, team, and why why is it that consistently Minnesota uh, has really bad teams? Why they so awful. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Got a little. Just, 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 um, just like. I love you. There's something about like their coaching or their staff or recruitment process. I, I don't know. Uh, they're known as the hockey state, but from what I can tell, they've never been known to finish. So, I don't, like we said earlier, only time will tell. I think we got a couple uh, handsome men in the in the studio here rooting for the Blues. Am I right, Bobby? <laughs> he's, he he agrees, <laughs> but, uh, okay, so but uh, only time will uh, tell. I'm sorry for the background noise. Uh, oh, yeah, it's not a problem. Uh, but, highly inappropriate for um, your station. I am aware, and I'm sorry. Uh, well, um, well, well, yeah, well, thank you so much for answering my question. Uh, no um, problem. We'll we'll keep you updated and, uh, on this, it, sir. It's great to talk to you. Great, uh, great to talk to you too, Bobby. And um, God bless. See ya. Bye bye. All right, all right. Uh, just got a score update for yeah. the Cardinals. Molina single to left. Peralta scored. Jay to third. Cards lead. The Brewers three to one. Bottom of the fourth. All right, three to one. Yep, can and handle that. They are at Bush tonight. You can see the yeah. you can see the lights from the um from actually from where I work over the medical campus. So I really? can see the stadium lights, and that was about four ten till five or something like that. They have lights on already. Really, that's pretty cool. Wow, from that far away. Um, oh, they're pretty powerful lights. Yeah. Oh, think about I it. They're probably bet. they're probably LEDs, but think you know think they're massive. Think what you would have on your your diamonds over there. Parts yeah, yeah. Times a million, <laughs> yeah. and that's about the brightness of the lights <laughs> at Bush. Yeah, it's it's nothing compared to the little lights on those planes. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and move on to NASCAR now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last week was the what du- happened? Was any the, uh, the any du- big news for? Uh, well, I'm, 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 I've, I've got I've got to lead into it, Timmy. <laughs> last week was the Duck Commander 500. Which, you know, Duck Commander's that brand of um, duck calls and hunting gear that's <laughs> famous because they had the show Duck Dynasty. Yeah. Actually, cool thing, I actually was down there in West Monroe where Duck Dynasty is filmed. Really? Mm-hmm. Doing what? We uh, we were on a church trip, actually, last summer. And, oh, uh, cool. Well, the trip was in Longview. The, tri- the conference itself was in Longview, Texas at Laterno University. Mm-hmm. Since my youth group's kind of really diverse and comes from a lot of areas... We always do some little something the weekend before. Yeah. Well, the youth pastor decided to get a cabin for us on the lake near West Monroe. Really? I mean, we were only about 30 minutes from West Monroe. And that's where it's filmed? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Where the cabin was. So we were, you know, we went in there, of course, and, uh... Yeah. I went in there and, um... <laughs> anyway, I went in there. <laughs> we, we were there, and, uh, it was a lot of fun. We all, you know, went to the store, went across West Monroe, went to some of the places. Really? It was really, it was really a cool thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, a, I've got some, a friend, uh, my sister's texting me right now about the trip. Yeah? With funny, <laughs> Did with she funny, go on it? With funny, and I, yeah, she was there too. Really? It was my, it was my last uh, youth trip and it was her second. Really? Yeah. Huh. But no, it was, it was really fun. It was a lot of fun. We got to do a lot together. We went to their church on Sunday. The... The church where all the Duck Dynasty people oh, were at. Yeah, went to yeah. their church on Sunday. Um, I got a pick with Uncle Sai actually. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And some pe- bet- between between all our group, we got picks with most of the people from the show. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, see, so it's like you, you you met them then. Yeah, at, we, church? at their church. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I I figured they I didn't I didn't no. expect no. them. No, and they're the same way. They're the same way on TV. They are in real life <laughs> really? too. Really? Definitely the same way. Like um, oh, Phil was up there. They we had to, actually had some um recruits into church and Phil got up there and had us all give do a standing ovation and applaud him. Really? It was awesome. Oh wow, that's so oh man. I want to meet some Be- being in the South is a lot different from being here in the North, <laughs> I can tell you that much. I bet. Now St. Louis is right St. Louis, Louis is right on the uh, border yeah. of it, so it's kinda of, you gotta kinda of get a little bit of both here in St. Louis, but you go any further north, you tend to get a lot of um a lot more it tends to be a little more, you know yeah, I, not like St. Louis is known for its friendliness. Yeah. No, I can I can imagine 
I, I, I mean, I, I know what you're getting at. Anyway, though, but so it was Duck Commander. Duck Commander 500 yeah. was the race, and it was at Texas Motor Speedway, which is one of the biggest tracks in the NASCAR circuit. Mm-hmm. And pre-game, of course, the pre-race stuff, of course, they had, let's see, they had they had uh, Willie, uh, Willie's wife, and Uncle Cy were all on there talking with the, the NASCAR and Fox guys. Really? I didn't get to watch it. I saw a picture. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure it was a blast for everybody. Yeah. And, you know, it was... I didn't get to see any of the race at all because I was, you know, work doing a lot of homework. Yeah. Really not liking my choice of minor right now, but <laughs> I'll get through it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it was interesting though. Um, results. My boy Jimmy Johnson won his second race of the season. There we go. <laughs> which puts him tied for most wins in you know the the new chase format, yeah. the new chase for the cup format, which I still do not understand to this day. <laughs> and I probably never will understand because NASCAR changes it every week on us. Yeah. Like, they, they had the qualifying format. You know, it's group qualifying now as opposed to single car. Mm-hmm. They had group qualifying set for a certain way, and they, they, had it the, they had it fine. Then for this race, they changed it. They changed <laughs> the rules on it. It used to, be, used to be two sessions at the smaller tracks, three of the big ones. Now it's two all across, and I'm sitting here going, NASCAR, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And they say, oh, let's make it more exciting. No, you're not making it exciting. You're making it confusing. You're losing fans that way. <laughs> yeah. I'm on, the, I'm, on the fan, I'm on the fan council for NASCAR, and I complain about the group qualifying all the day and time. Really? To them. It's baloney. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch my words there. <laughs> no, Don't believe let me. Slip. Believe me, off the air, <laughs> off the air. Oh, um, you, you, I've heard you, it. you would think I'm in the Navy <laughs> with how much I swear off the air. <laughs> anyway, but back to the race. Uh, Jimmy, yeah. My boy Jimmy got first. And he led for. He led about most of it, yeah. And then uh, Dale Jr. got third. Yeah. A top three for him, which is definitely good. They're on the same team now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. been on the same team for about five or six years now. Yeah. Because I remember when Jr. moved over to Hendrick. Mm-hmm. So let's see. There's, um. oh, yeah, Carla, another Cardinal update. Carpenter double deep right. Jay scored Moline to third. So up four. So we got runner second, third, bomb of the fourth. I'm checking for any up. Well, I don't have it right now. Anyway, back to NASCAR, yeah. though. Let's see. So the top ten was Johnson, Kevin Harvick, Dale Jr., Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, Jimmy McMurray from Joplin. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Gordon seventh, Kane eighth, Truex Jr. ninth, Carl Edwards tenth. And then moving on, you get big names. Danica was sixteenth. Mm-hmm. So Danica's been consistently doing really good this year. Yeah. And it looks like Kurt Busch. He he started. Uh, Starting position, he started in first, and then he he ended up falling all the yeah, way back. Yeah, he got the pole, and he just fell back. Yeah, where Jimmy Jimmy started fifth, fifth so. so he had a good start. Yeah, let's see, and then you got Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He he came from twenty second to fifteenth. Yeah, uh, Greg Biffle. I'm trying to look at some of these guys. Harvick was second. Yeah, Harvick was Finished second. second. Uh, Tony was m- smoke. Tony was twenty uh, fourth. He did, yeah. He didn't go up and smoke this week. <laughs> no, I kid you not. They made a joke because his he went up and smoked a couple weeks ago, and they made a joke about that. Really? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Any big names back in the back of the pack? No, no big names been in the back of the pack. Most of the most of the yeah. big name guys finished in the top twenty four. So it definitely was it definitely was an interesting race. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and your boy, your boy Jimmy boy Johnson won. got the got the win. Yep. He had to out. He had to out duel Harvick for most for on the last laps to do it. But yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Johnson continued his recent domination of NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races at Texas Saturday night, rallying after a late pit stop for a victory in the 19th annual Duck Commander 500. <laughs> he took the lead on lap 321, so he didn't lead most of the race to me. He only led, I think, the last 13. It says here he led for. 128 laps, so he must have been. Uh, maybe he led earlier in the race. Then yeah, he may and have. Then maybe he led the last. 13. He, yeah, I think he took the he took lead on lap 321 when he drove under and past Jimmy Mack and Kevin exiting dog leg of Texas's high bank track. So the dog leg is, I think, mm-hmm. the dog leg would be between. I'm trying to remember how it's set up. I think the dog leg is going to be that that slight turn right before you hit the front stretch. Okay. I'll show you a diagram later so you can understand what I'm doing. Yeah. But Texas is kind of laid out like a tri. It's a tri-oval. So basically it's, you know, oval. It's a, it's a half oval, but then you get a tri-oval, so it's kind of like a triangle, and then huh. it wraps. It's. I have to show you a diagram of it. Yeah. It's hard to describe. Anybody who knows NASCAR knows what a tri-oval looks like. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And the final 14 laps featured a battle between Johnson and Harvick, the reigning series champions. Yeah, Harvick won it last year. Mm-hmm. He finished second despite scraping the turn for a wall in lap 331. Oh, wow. And wow, was, out of 334. So, yeah, so four laps ago, he scraped the turn for a wall. He finished, Jimmy finished a second ahead of Harvick. That's his 72nd uh, victory in 478 starts. He woke up six Saturday and addressed the media post-race with a scratchy voice. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he raced. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, though. And then, of course, Timmy, there's always a tradition at NAS, at uh, Texas. Yeah. Where the winner always fires <laughs> off six shoes at the end of the race, and you see Jimmy with a pick of it going... <laughs> Fired off the six shooters for the win. And, of course, he's got a cowboy hat on, too. Yeah. Oh, really? They're throwing, yeah. <laughs> throwing a cowboy hat. Well deserved. Oh, they say ev- they say everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a great race. It was awesome. Yeah. It, it sounded like it sounded like a great race anyway. I didn't get to watch it, but it's... I definitely like my boy when my boy wins. Yeah, no. I mean, you're always you're always always rooting for him. I always am. Somebody can come out on top. It, you know. Def- I mean, probably speaking for you, but add something to it. Yeah, I mean, and even if Jimmy finishes in the top ten, it's pretty cool. Yeah, because he he had a couple races where he 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 uh, had a DNF. Yeah. Did not finish. Did, yeah. Huh. And right now the the um the series standings are are as follows: Harvick is leading with two wins. Uh, Joey Logano is second with one win, 26 points back. Truex Jr. is 40 points back in third with no wins yet. But yeah, the, right now, if you want to go by wins, which they get some bonus points once the chase is set for mm-hmm. a number of wins, yeah. Jimmy and Harvick will be neck and neck at this point because they both have two wins each. Wow, and Jimmy's Jimmy's sit, all the way back at six. He's sitting 90 points back, though. I mean, that's not... Pretty, that's not too hard to come back from. No, especially this early in the early in the year. Yeah, guys like Kurt Busch though. Kurt may not before too long. Kurt may not have a shot. He's earned sixty-two points back in twenty-first. Yeah. But then again, you gotta remember Kurt was out for a couple races. Yeah, because he got fireball. He got fireball the week when he when he came back. Two yeah. Weeks ago? Not too long. Yeah. Let's see. Carl. Carl could have still a shot. Where's Gordon? Ooh, Gordon's thirteenth. I'm trying to find some big name guy that's really far back. Yeah, man, he was pretty far back. Tony Stewart. Where's Smoke? Oh, Smoke's in 32nd, 199 points back. He may not have a shot this year. Yeah, and you get some guys here that, you know, haven't even entered a single race yet. <laughs> doesn't look too promising for them, then. No, it doesn't. And it's funny. Look, the, you, they can't even calculate it because the, uh, they can't even calculate the, uh, I think, I guess the, I guess the point back thing only goes to 306 points back. Oh yeah. So guys that haven't started, you know, see, like some guys do do what they call start and park. So, yeah, like they'll start a race and then they'll park it. Huh. So you got guys like here we go. I'll give you a good one. Mike Wallace. He has eight points because he did a start and park. Okay. Huh. So with start and park, basically that means is that? they'll start the race, but then they'll end up wrecking in early laps and then just park it. Oh, nice. Just, it's just not so they worth. can get points. Yeah. Huh. So basically, it's like told they told their car out or something. Yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, you get the idea. Like Tony Stewart, he hasn't done starting parks, but he only has he's 199 points off the lead. Yeah. Still though, not too far to come back. Mm-hmm. Sheesh, Paul Menard dropped 10 spots this last week. He must have had a bad finish. Yeah. Dang, 10 spots. Wonder where he did finish. Yeah, I don't know. Look it up because I know you can still get the results there. Yeah. It's Paul Menard. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's gonna help you any. He may be in, he may be back in the top in the uh, top thirty. Oh yeah, uh, 40, yeah 40 40 first. first. That that'll drop you easily. Out of forty three racers, that'll drop you easily. What happened? Did it say engine? Uh, engine. He blew yeah. an engine. Yeah. Yep. He blew his engine. Up in smoke. <laughs> <laughs> three engine uh, malfunctions. Couple accidents. Yeah, accidents. I yeah. A number of accidents there. That, that's a thing. I mean, you get, you get these big super speeders like Daytona, Talladega, even Texas, you could say. There's always the big one. Yeah. At the end of the race, there's always the big one. Somebody gets too overzealous and tries, <laughs> and tries to pass. Try to go three wide. You can't do three wide. Yeah. And then... 
crunch, <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Big wreck behind the leaders. Yeah. And you'll hear the announcers go, oh, big wreck, turn four. Because <laughs> it always seems to happen in turn four. Really? It always seems to happen in turn four on the back stretch. Coming around the bend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, I, I noticed that turn two, normally on, at most big tracks, it's turn two, the back stretch, and turn three that are the accident zones. Really? Hmm. I've noticed that about the big ones, but then again, I've watched it for quite a while. Yeah. The yeah, big one. Happen. <laughs> I don't even know who coined that term, but that's what we all call it in the, in the racing world. Yeah, waiting for the big one. So let's move on. Uh, Timmy, you put some, you asked some NBA news. Yeah, waiting for our NBA guru. If you're out there listening. Yeah. Waiting for the call-in. Definitely waiting for the call-in. So we can talk about some NBA, but uh, but the season's... A couple people, a couple teams have finished the season. Um, a couple, couple teams are ending tonight. I know... Uh, the Clippers are uh, locking um, at uh, at second, I think, because they're they're do- they're done with the they they don't have any games remaining. But a few people are playing tonight. The Spurs are losing to the Pelicans, uh, which would be that's that's a big one. Um, if if the Pelicans can win, they will. Uh, I think they'll they'll clinch, and Oklahoma City won't make it in. Um, and Oklahoma, I mean Oklahoma City is a big, good team. They've uh, they've had some injury problems, but um, that'd be some big news if they didn't make it. But it's looking like the on the Western Conference, Golden State's, you know, without a doubt clinched uh, first place. They've had that for a while. Um, the Clippers are looking like they'll come in second. San Antonio in third. The Portland Trailblazers in fourth, uh, and they'll be playing. Uh, the Houston Rockets and San Antonio at, at third will play the Memphis Grizzlies. The Clippers will play the Dallas Mavericks, and Golden State will play New Orleans. And this is all a, a, a bit of its subject to change on the upcoming games, but most of it's pretty. I mean, there's not a lot of teams are done playing, so a lot of it's pretty set in stone. Um, on the Eastern side, you got the Hawks that are Hawks in first, Cleveland in second. Um, at at the uh, the third and fourth place uh, are either this is still subject to change. I think Chicago and Toronto, if the Bulls beat Atlanta um, or the Raptors uh, or if Toronto loses to Charlotte, um, then Chicago will be number three, and if vice versa, uh, then Toronto will be number three. So a lot of it. I mean, you know, there's still some up in the air. But and then the Wizards are in fifth, Milwaukee's in sixth, Boston Celtics are seventh, and the Pacers um, are still in the hunt. It looks like they'll come in eighth uh, if they can beat the Grizzlies. But the Nets are still if the if the if the Pacers beat the Grizzlies, then they lock in at eighth. But the Nets are still in the running for that. So there's a lot coming in on that. If our NBA guru <laughs> still waiting for the call in. Um, he's a he's a, he's a whiz on the in the world of professional basketball. I'm sure he'd love to talk about how uh, how great Steph Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors are doing this year. You think so, Bobby? Uh, sorry, <laughs> Timmy, my my mind was wandering. Oh uh, no! If, if, say if, it again. If the NBA, if our NBA friend over there in, in a greasy deck, he'd love to talk about Steph Curry. <laughs> oh yeah, he would. He that he would. And the, and the Warriors are having a heck of a year. Um, but and other so that that and that the tournament we'll we'll talk about that next week when that starts up. Uh, the what, NBA what, tournament. what are the um, what are the possible matchups looking like right now? It uh, looks like uh, it's a lot of it. There's some people that some teams, you know, there's a couple one one game left for some teams. Uh, so if they win or lose, you know, they might play different teams. Um, but. It look, it's it's pretty set in stone how, as it is right now, um, and then with that the uh, a big one here, Bobby. You know who's in last place? Who's that? The Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh oh, <laughs> I know somebody who's going to be calling in a little mad at us. <laughs> there. Hey, we can't control where the teams are. It's it's not up to us. <laughs> Maybe they're just planning for a first round pick next year. Maybe get a. A homebound Tyus Jones, who knows? But if if they if they can get that the lottery pick, um, 
so that's 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 really probably all we got in the NBA. Um, they're the Masters of this weekend. I don't know. I wasn't able to. I, I followed it a little bit, uh, just with the highlights, but I wasn't able to to really watch any of it. Were you? Yeah, you know, and Timmy, I really don't have an interest in golf. I don't. Yeah. I mean, all, all, <laughs> I, all the only stuff I know from golf is ha- is what I learned in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> really? Yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge. Go home, ball. You took it for your home, huh? Answer me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm with you. I'm a happy Gilmore fan. I love the movie. But as for golf, the I'm price not. is wrong, Bobby. <laughs> price is wrong. But I, I love that movie. Um, <laughs> Bob um, Barker. Bob Barker kicking his butt. <laughs> yeah. That never gets old. And Lee Trevino, he's the guy. He's the guy that sits there and has that look and his, the the surprise look on his face and just shakes his head. He had one line in the movie. Yeah, shooter, What's that? shooter goes Grizzly Ad- and Grizzly Adams had a beard to Happy and Lee Trevino. <laughs> Grizzly Adams did have a beard. <laughs> and Shooter just walks off the set. <laughs> hey. Yeah. No, did you um? Did you did you know that um? The guy that was actually talking about the energy force around the ball and all that stuff was was it also an SNL with Adam Sandler. He was on Saturday Night Live the same time as Adam Sandler. I'm trying the, to think. The guy, you know, the guy. Was. The ball has its own natural force. Happy. You don't remember that guy? No, it's been a while since I've seen it. Okay, well, either way, that that guy was also on Saturday Night Live with Adam Sandler. Huh. He did he did Weekend Update for I think two or three seasons. Huh. The guy's a hoot though, Kevin Nealon. Look him up. Oh, that that name sounds. I'm sure if I saw saw the face, you know, I'd know. I'd, You'd know. I'd be able to, uh, You'd know. Oh, yeah. Put put the put the name to the face. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this Jordan Spieth ties Tiger Woods' scoring record at the 2015 Masters um, at negative or 18 under par, which is just about. I mean, it tied the record. It's about unheard of. He's a no name. No one really knew who he was. I think he was at. A, Texas uh, at Austin, a uh, big golfing school, and 21 years old, and he, he ties one of the greatest golfers of all time uh, for the number or for the lowest score at the Masters, which is arguably, I mean, it's the Daytona 500 of the golf world, really. Um, yep. Daytona 500 is probably the biggest. The Great American Race. Yeah. And then the Masters is the big. Uh, it's, it's like it's like Daytona 500 tournament. or the Indy 500 for the Indy cars. Yeah. Starting off the season with, um, you know, with the big one. <laughs> Speaking of the big one, um, it cracks me up. Um, I was gonna say something. Yeah. Can't remember, I can't remember what I was gonna say now. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Happy Gilmore. You, you know that one announcer, the one announcer. We haven't seen Happy Gilmore this bad since his first day on tour. <laughs> yeah. And the one goes, "Who the heck is Happy Gilmore? <laughs> yeah. That guy, Vern Lindquist. He does basketball for CBS Sports." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you probably, probably heard him calling some of the NCAA tournament games. Yeah, I was gonna say that name sounds familiar. Too. Yeah, Vern's yeah. done, but now Vern isn't known as a CBS sportscaster. He's known as the the announcer in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's announced basketball for yeah, he's done it forever. For way longer than he was in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> yeah, I mean he was in Happy Gilmore for probably you know a combined total of thirty minutes. If that. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> Timmy, you need to call tech support because your computer can't connect to the internet? I know, I'm not getting any Wi-Fi in here. I, gotta, I, never I, have a pro- I don't have a problem at all. Oh, that's right, I have a Mac. <laughs> I always got to bring it back. I always got to bring the Mac into it. <laughs> I sit at work every day and I go, and whenever there's a problem, I go, and that is why my personal computer is a Mac. Yeah, everybody comes in with problems on uh, PCs. Yeah, no, my own computer has, prob- has a billion problems. Oh, but it's a PC. Right, my work computer's a PC. Yeah. Oh well, it's you know, Timmy. I don't know why we haven't had any call, had made calls this week. I know, Last I week the lines were ringing off the hook. And we've we've come to the uh, when we're planning. You know, we think we plan for people. We at this point plan for Collins. Yeah, I mean, we plan for the line to be ringing nonstop. It's like some week we've only got one. We might have got two, but that second Collins didn't. I don't know who that. 
I don't know. I don't know I what think, he was talking I about. Think, I think I know who it, who it was. I, think I know who it was. But I think he was giving our first caller a little. He's pulling our first caller's leg a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and the second. I mean, I think I know who it was, and we both know he's not a very important person. Not really. No. <laughs> he's pretty irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. He is. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, Timmy. I, I gotta pull this one into the into this into the uh, radio show. I'm sitting here yeah. with my computer out here, you know, texting my sister. Yeah. After the you brought the Mac comment. She says she said the same exact thing you did. Always gotta bring the Mac into it. <laughs> hey, I got I got a message for you out there, little sister. Don't you use a Mac at, for from school? <laughs> Thanks, Apple One the One Initiative, for giving us computers that are pieces of crap. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. She'll tie. She'll tie back in seven seconds after the delay goes through. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> wait. Wait. We just bashing Max right there. No, I wasn't bashing Max. I was uh, bashing the fact that our our school district gives us you know the dinky little eleven inches as opposed uh, to my yeah. fifteen inch retina right here. Yeah. I do, but that's irrelevant. Her reply. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I do, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> I'm staying out of this one. Yeah, I know. Sounds like I'll, a family I'll affair. Be, I'll, um, I, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll be, I'll be talking to her after the show. <laughs> no. to try, try to sell this debate. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really don't know. If, uh, I don't. The masters, though. But yeah, the masters. I think it cracks me up. He's lining up the putt. He's checking. <laughs> he's checking the lay the green again. Now he's going to line it up one more time. <laughs> and now he takes a shot. It's good. Golf clap. No, no. For for me, I do what Happy Gilmore did. No, I do what what they did in Caddyshack. Yeah, it's in a right. hole. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Can't be that quiet and. No, I I, I can't. Serious I can't thing. Yeah. The only time I'm, the only time I remember quiet is at a sporting event. The only time I remember quiet is at a Billiken basketball game when our guy's shooting free throws. Yeah. And then when the other guy is, it's all ah, yeah, as yeah, loud sure. as you can be. Sporting game, uh, sporting events are all for getting, you know, rowdy and. That's why we have the saloon ticks. Like That's why we have the saloon ticks here at Slough. Yeah. Oh man, the saloon ticks are nuts. <laughs> That's why they're called the saloon ticks. Hey! <laughs> Where's my my theology professor the likes to do? My theology professor loves to make loves to make a face where he just sits there with his mouth open and a big smile like. <laughs> you can't see it on the air, but believe me, it's a big smile. I just you know show all his teeth makes like. A joke. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a weird quirk for, of my uh, theology professor. Waiting for others to laugh at it. Yeah, and nobody ever usually laughs because it's an eight a.m. class. Yeah, if they show up even. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. You'd be surprised. A lot of people do show. I'm showing it to my class. Yeah. You you and uh, you and I both know another guy who's in my actually a couple of people who are in uh, my theology class. Oh really? Yeah. A couple guys like on the floor. Uh right? yeah, actually a guy and a girl. Oh okay. Huh. Yeah, um, it's really a. No, fun. it's really good. Yeah, let's see. But again, to me, you said you said you said you really actually liked the opening day, how the Cardinals did the opening day thing. Yeah, yeah. The it's, tradition we've had forever. Because I, yeah, I've never been around. Uh, you know, Dayton, where I'm from, they have a uh, a minor league team uh, for the Reds, but it's you know we don't. It's not a baseball town at all. It's a basketball town. But here it was it was weird. It was cool seeing the different, you know, how different cities. The sports they care about, the sports they put their emphasis on, and how they uh, how they celebrate those traditions, and by the looks of it, it seems like I couldn't have celebrated it at a better <laughs> at a better city than St. Louis. No, definitely not. It was really I really love seeing it. Yeah, with you know, like I'm so said, glad the I got to see it. Come out, the Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm but, really. Uh, now, if only they could have got a win on it. Yeah, it stinks they couldn't get a win, but you know what? It doesn't matter. The Cardinals are still, the Cardinals are still a great team. Plus tonight they're all wearing, they're all they're, they are all wearing forty two for Jackie Robinson Day. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So tonight everybody's forty two. <laughs> really? Huh. No, I, think, I didn't. I didn't. Even and it's interesting because the Cardinals actually retired forty two before the, the major league did. Really? We retired for Bruce Suter, one of our pitchers. Oh really? And he was supposed to be there for the um, for opening day, but. His wife is ha- is a sick, so uh, so he couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah, understandable. He no. was um, family he, first. He was back. Yeah, definitely family first. And speaking of the Cardinals, again, Cardinal way. Yeah, yeah. It looks like now it's the bottom of the fifth, two outs, and they're still up four to one. Um, but it'll be, inter- it'll be interesting to see if they can pull off that win. Yeah. Uh, well, definitely that'll be definitely a topic on next week since we won't know the score by the end of this week. But uh, I don't. I don't know. 
I don't know what else we got. We don't really have anything else. You know what? It's about that time, though, anyway. So it, it worked perfectly this week. It yeah. perfectly. It's about yeah, that time. So too. we're going to go ahead and sign off. I mean, nobody yeah. else has called in. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and sign off for, for this week's edition of BT Sports. And I'll tell you, the next two weeks are going to be really interesting as we get to our final two weeks of BT Sports for the yeah. semester. Yeah. For sure, it's it's and it's you weird for you will not books. want you will not want to miss the April twenty ninth edition. Yeah, the f- grand finale <laughs> of, of BT Sports. See what we got in store for you. Yeah, we're gonna have a <laughs> really good show in store for you. But yeah, on that note, on that note, I'm Bobby Stillwell and I'm Tim Shigru and this is BT Sports. We will see you uh, next week. Yeah.